right, so anyway, thank you for coming. I do appreciate you coming out in this cold weather. This is uh, above and beyond the call, so definitely thank you. Uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, discuss with everybody a change in life that we had. About seven years ago, we started to do things a little bit differently, and it led to a pretty significant change in our lives. The biggest skeptic in my life was, of course, my wife, Charlene, but uh, seven years into it, she's no longer skeptical. She's seen a pretty good result. So, so what I want to do is start out, though, by offering somebody some carrots that I happen to pick up one of my really good customers in the city. Anyway, these are organic, and they're amazing. They're as, as good as they get. And if anyone would like these, just all I need is one hand up, and they're yours to take home with you. I am. All right, there we have one. All right, now, are you going to have volunteers come up? I did notice that there were potentially a couple of bugs on here, so I'm going to spray this with some insecticide because I just don't want to have, you don't want bugs in your house. You know, that's the last thing you want. But don't worry, all you have to do is rinse these when you get home, and they'll be fine. You're okay with that, right? <laughs> so let me ask you something. You wouldn't, nobody here would want these now, right? So why would you want them off a store shelf when the same thing happened to them? The only difference here is that you saw me do it. Charlene and I walk around all over the country in our big truck with our dogs and our products, and we visit all of our customers. And in some of the places we go, we're driving through vast amounts of farmland. And the amazing thing is these crop dusters are just flying near waterways, swooping down and dropping clouds of this insecticide on all of the vegetables and fruits that we see growing in fields, beautiful fields all around us. And on the positive side, the pilots are amazing. They really are. They're, they're just very skilled. They come in, they swoop in, hit the end of the field, and do this bank turn and come back and do it again. And we're always amazed. It's mesmerizing watching these guys. But then when you start to really think about what they're doing. By the way, water. I wouldn't have sprayed insecticide. But uh, you are going to take these home with you. These are good. Right? It's just something to think about. And, and this is why I'm here. I'm trying to get everybody to think. We didn't think. Years ago, we were doing things the way we were trained to do them by our parents. We were doing things that were a product of being marketed to, and ultimately those things weren't very productive to our health. So we started to think a little differently about how we do things. And the very first thing that I want to do to demonstrate that is now I'd like a volunteer. Okay? <laughs> and what I want is somebody to volunteer to eat a spoonful of this. <laughs> is there anyone who will do that? Marcina, you seem to be pretty courageous. You took the, uh, but you won't, would you volunteer to sure. eat? Sure. You would eat a okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you know me and you like me, right? <laughs> That's right. All right. The reality is that somebody in this room may have done it already today. Somebody in this room may have taken a spoonful of this and consumed it. On the street, if I asked 100 people if they would do it, nobody would say yes, and yet many of them might have done it because this is what it is. It's a sweetener. And all you have to do is put it into a nice colored little packet put the word sweetener on it, and suddenly it's okay to take a spoonful of this and eat it. And you have to think about that. You have to think about what marketing can get you to do. I mean, that, that to me is amazing, that you can take chemicals that nobody would say yes to consuming and change what they represent just by putting it into different packaging and calling them something different, and suddenly they'll do it. So again, it's about marketing. It's about things that we don't really understand are happening to us. We're bombarded by marketing all day long, and ultimately, the decisions we make are based upon that marketing. So what I tell people is turn your brains on and understand that there's a lot of stuff coming at you and, and, and just think about it. Does it make sense or doesn't it make sense? And if it doesn't make sense, don't do it. I'm not an expert in anything that we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm not an expert. There's no certificate on the wall or diploma that would lead you to believe that you could make a lazy decision. So the good thing about that is I'm you. And that means that you can listen to what we've done to change our lives and decide whether or not these things might be also things that you should consider. And the thing that we know is we live in a toxic world. This is an illustration that demonstrates the sources of pollution, and probably not all of them, but when we're done, because I know this is pretty small print, when we're done, you should really come up and take a look at this and understand all of the things that are really happening in our environment, and have happened for many years. When I was a child living in this town, and I did grow up here like some of the other people in this room, the, the things that were done that were beyond our control were amazing. There were trucks driving up and down the streets spewing out billowing clouds of very thick smoke in the summer to control mosquito populations. And we were told that it was okay to run through it and play in it because it was fun. And our parents believed that when they were told that it only killed mosquitoes and it was not harmful to humans, that that was fun. 
And, and that to me is kind of ridiculous when you really think about it. Brains just weren't turned on. My mother was a cigarette smoker whose first child died at the age of a year and a half. His name was Bruce, and he died of respiratory failure. I was the second child with severe respiratory problems, and she smoked in the car, in the house, took me to an allergist who, in the examination room, smoked. <laughs> if you think about that, that's just unbelievable. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, right now that's outrageous, but back in those days that was normal behavior. So ultimately I had no control over what was going into my lungs and it was affecting me in a big way. Fortunately I was able to change that as, as life wore on. My mother used to have things in the cupboard, all of which had a shelf life of 99 years. <laughs> Any vegetable that was served could be sucked through your teeth. I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> now, the positive side for my mother is 89 years old and she's still alive, driving in this town. <laughs> oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, which is amazing. And she only hits inanimate objects, <laughs> which only supports the local economy because of the body shops in this town, you know. But she never hurts anyone, which is great. And the other positive side for her is that in the middle of the night she has to go to the bathroom, Lights are not needed. She can glow right, right in, <laughs> all the way in and out. So no, it's great. I, you know, not to bust on my mother, but you know. uh, my father, who prepared all of the food on the grill, was, uh, which was, we affectionately refer to, of course, as the crematorium. Uh, he, he charred everything to death over very chemically laced charcoal, and we consumed that. He swore that the water was the best water. You could drink as much of it as you wanted. Not to mention all of the soda that was, you know, offered to us, and we consumed all that sugar that went in. And, and these are all things that are really contradictory to our health. So you have to realize that you've been programmed to do things in a way that's not necessarily productive to your health, and you've also been marketed to. Now the thing that I always do is say, we live in this toxic world, and the question is, do you want to live toxically, or do you want to do something about this toxic world? My contention is that we live in a way that creates a toxicity in our bodies that goes well above and beyond anything that we have control over. So the first thing you have to think about is what don't we have control over? What's the first most important thing in your life right now? And you're all consuming it. It's air. And you don't have control over the air because you're not going to walk around in a level three bio suit. So if there's no control over the air and you're going to be in buildings that burn fossil fuels, there's hydrocarbons present. If you're going to be in cars that burn fossil fuels, which means the one in front of you is spewing out the fumes through the vents of your car and into your lungs, you have a toxicity building up that goes well above and beyond any control you have. So what do you have control over? What goes in your mouth and what goes on your skin? And that's why I'm here, to talk about those things. Because the thing that we do is we bring about a much greater toxicity into our bodies through our mouths and through our skin.